Next, we have uh, Nexus. Just share with us, uh, Sir ZKVM. We have uh, Daniel Maring, um, the founder and CEO of, of um, Nexus, and uh, Jens Growth, the inventor of the most deployed ZK Snark Prover, Growth 16. Let's welcome them to the stage. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, excellent. Yeah. So um, yeah, this is a project that started at Stanford. It's uh, uh, we're essentially like a team of ten cryptographers. Um, you should check out our website. We had recent new announcements, like an open source of our CKVM and uh, some other things. A uh, huge fan of the work of the people that spoke before. Uh, I think that work is great. This work is very preliminary, so not recommended for production use. But you can actually use your product today. It's a fully open source MIT license. So, uh, yeah, so for context, I'm Daniel, founder of Nexus. Um, I studied at Stanford, cryptography, um, been at this project since I was a student there. And uh, you, does that work? Yes, and I'm Jens, uh, chief scientist at Nexus, um, and I've been working in zero knowledge for yeah more than two decades by yeah. now, probably most of you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're excited to tell you all about um, our project, which is I said went live like a couple of days ago. So our project is has a noble purpose. It's um, it's about human cooperation, about uniting the world's computers, and um, we want to get the computers of the world together um, for a single purpose. And that's um, essentially for all of us to come together and cooperate in the proving of just arbitrary computations, uh, which has been a topic discussed in this, this event. So here's, a, here's just like a, a, a weird question, let's say. Is there a way that we can unite Every single of our computers, right? Let's say your phones or computers, um, uh, data servers, whatever, into a single CKVM. One CKVM. So you can imagine all of these dots as computers and all of them working together to compute as a single machine. In other words, can we build a global, verifiable supercomputer? that is powered by large-scale proof aggregation, such that the total computing power of the system is proportional to the collective computing power of all of its nodes. And, well, the reason we would be interested in that is to reach a massive scale in the compute power available to be destined for proving, right? <clears throat> so, after a few, many months of work, we're happy to open source uh, the first versions of these two systems, uh, which is the Nexus CKBM and the Nexus Network. And they're actually essentially the same systems, uh, but at different scales. The Nexus Network is an instantiation of the Nexus CKBM in a distributed computer network. And so, yeah, this is fully free for everybody to use. You're um, invited to fork it or whatever you want, MIT, Apache 2. License, you can see our website, nexus.xyz. Um, and you will find a white paper there as well that explains all of our technologies and, um, and implementation. So, you know, as uh, it was being discussed in, in the last talk, right, it is an interesting problem that of like accelerating CKBM computations, right? So just a really big goal. Is there any way we could, we could reach one trillion CPU cycles proved per second, let's say within 2024, right? That, that's a huge number, and I'm going to put it into into scale. Um, so before before I move into the next one, um, the cost of CK, as in measured as the relative cost of proving versus the cost of computing something without proving, so the cost of verifiability. Um, well, there are many numbers. Uh, some people here might disagree because it depends on multiple things. Uh, but we're talking about CKBMs. Um, it's usually be between 10 to the 9 to 10 to the 6 in the cost, right? So what, what I mean by this is that the costs of verifiably computing something is around a million to a billion times more expensive 
uh, than just running the same program, right? And so we can do many things, right? We can grab a snark and combine it with a circuit and um, well, maybe run it on a CPU, maybe you run it on, a, on some GPUs or FPGAs, and maybe you get to 10 to the 7 or to 10 to the 6. Um, but to get here for the cost of CK, to decrease by, let's say, five or six orders of magnitude, it's not enough to just throw GPUs at it, right? GPUs or FPGAs are going to give you some 10x, 100x in performance. So we're interested in the problem of achieving order of magnitude reduction for CKVMs and zero knowledge in general, but specifically for CKVMs. Another way to phrase this problem is um, on the side of the uh, speed of a CKVM. And here Hertz, as was mentioned in, in the last talk, right, it's CPU cycles proofed per second. So current CKVMs um, exist in this bound, 100 kilohertz, 100 CPU cycles proofed per second. There are many um, details about it. But let's say that to achieve 10, 100, 1,000, a million X to get to 1 trillion hertz, there's that, that's a gigantic jump. So the question is, how can we make this jump? And well, we care about it so that we can actually get to the next level of, of Ethereum, um, right? We believe that there will be uh, millions of CK rollups all running in parallel. So we want to support that future for Ethereum. And so, um, so uh, uh, for context, I made these slides. Uh, <laughs> Jens didn't make them. He, he would disagree with some of this history, <laughs> right? Um, I, I put it here in a way that it looked convenient uh, to explanation, right? So you have IPs, uh, the, the creation of zero knowledge proofs, PCPs, um, the famous SNARKs, then the Starks. Then you have Halo 2 that in innovate on this for using accumulation. And then in 2022, we saw a new type of accumulation system, um, right, which we call uh, folding, right? And it was Nova by Srinath Sethi and Abiram Kotapali and others. And we've seen an explosion of many theoretical papers um, on folding and uh, folding-based incrementally verifiable computation, that's IBC, and folding-based proof-carrying data, which is a generalization of IBC to the distributed setting. But all of this here is actually theoretical work. There exists a, um, an implementation of NOVA from Microsoft Research, from the original author, and their friends from Lurk have been working on a fork of that, which is very good. I invite you to check it out. Um, we have essentially done from the ground up our own implementation of NOVA, which is now open source as of two days ago, along with other of the elements here, for example, CycleFold, and um, soon to be released, probably within the next week, uh, an implementation of Supernova and many other things. So the point is, this type of folding schemes have very nice properties that essentially have to do with proof accumulation. I will talk a little bit more about this, but essentially reaching the next 1 million X, or orders of magnitude improvement in CKVM speed, requires new cryptography. Like GPUs and FPGAs is not enough. To get a million X, it's a totally different question. So now we're going to talk about the components that essentially allow for something like this to happen. And this is the scientific part. Um, so yes, want to chat about it? Sure. OK. So, so, so part one is that we are not going to achieve a trillion hertz without doing some parallelization, right? So we are building a, a CKVM a network uh, where you have like multiple layers of, of this uh, construction, right? So there's a sort of an execution layer, there's IBC, there's compression, there's a lot of tools that go together. And we think a big part of the solution that we have to provide is actually providing that structure, right? So whereas you could sort of like have a lot of those layers by themselves if you do smaller proofs, but when you want to prove something really big, then we need to think this layer through. Yeah, I, I can talk about it. So, so the traditional CKVM architecture is conceptually simple. You grab a SNARK or a Stark or something like that, then you grab some circuits for a virtual machine, and then you combine the two, and then you prove them. And um, yeah, maybe you have some more structure than that. Maybe you have multiple layers of recursion, but it essentially looks like this. 
and it hasn't changed in, in, in a lot of time. What has changed is the different types of snarks or how to arithmeticize things. Um, we believe our CKBM is the first one to present um, additional structure. Um, like the, 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 the step is, is only seen at the top. We have multiple layers in the machine with uh, multiple parts of the architecture, individual components in a, let's say, highly modular fashion that are supposed to essentially contribute to this goal of having a really, really powerful prover mechanism. So um, a way that we like to think about it is um, an analogy with artificial intelligence, right? In, the, in 1962, you would have uh, one or two layer neural network um, but then in 2012, actually what, what we see are convolutional neural networks that have uh, much, much more structure and architecture to them because, um, well, that's what's required to get to the next level. Of course, the analogy is not direct and it doesn't have to be true, but, well, at least we think that's the direction in which we are going. Um, so CKBMs need more structure than what currently exists to reach the next scale of compute that we are thinking about. So as mentioned, right, this is open source under MIT license. Um, as I mentioned, first from the ground up in Arcworks, open source implementations of folding schemes. By from, from the ground up, it's like we didn't take code from um, anybody else except Arcworks. Uh, so Supernova, sorry, Hypernova, that's the NAS risk that's not public yet. But you will find the other things there. Um, Spartan and Ceromorph are not folding schemes. Ceromorph is a uh, PCS, Spartan is a modified snark, but essentially what I'm trying to say is you can find all of these building blocks of folding schemes to build whatever you guys want, uh, totally free. It took us many months to engineer these systems, um, to benchmark them, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, But they're free to use for everybody here. And so, yeah, you can find them there. Uh, once again, not super no hyper no, that, that should have had an asterisk. Um, wanna, yeah, sorry. okay. So, so, so this is like an inside view of what does this, the system uh, look like, right? So we have like this massive parallelization. We need to reach the goal of a, a terahertz uh, network. Um, we're using a two-cycle of elliptic curves that's part of the cycle fold scheme, right? And then we're using these folding schemes, uh, Nova right now. We're looking at uh, supernova and, and hypernova. So that's upcoming work. Um, and, and you have like proofs that sort of like both live in one curve and the other curve and you sort of like aggregate them up across uh, the, the tree, right, to get a combined proofs for everything. So you basically have folding steps all the way up through this tree. Right, but so here's the important part. Each node in the tree of the folding process um, is part of this incrementally verifiable computation. So it can be performed by untrusted parties. So that's the important part. Each node here can be a different computer that doesn't have to be trusted. And we can all come together into uh, building this tree and generating a proof. Um, and you can verify each point there. Then from taking this from theory to actual practice, there's a lot of engineering involved in, of course. Um, but I mean, like this doesn't come as magic, right? Like we are making trade-offs here in order to be able to achieve this. And um, you have the really tiny proofs, for example, from GROT16 or other SNARKs like Halo2 that fit it within Ethereum very well. You have Starks, which are asymptotically and concretely larger in terms of proof size. Well, folding, those are gigantic proofs. Those are like megabyte type of size of proofs. But having really large proofs allows us to do um, all of these nice things about recursion and uh, PCD and all those sort of things. I know some of you might have some questions about communication latency on such a network, uh, but that's a, a different discussion. You can compress the proofs, you can do some nice tricks um, within, with subtrees and all those sort of things. Um, Jens, maybe you want to chat about the proof compression? Uh, sh sure. Uh, I guess the slide in some sense says it all, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is basically that, that you do uh, composition, right? So you take the large widgets you get in Nova before you send it over the network, right? You would want to compress it first. So that layer you can put in snarks to compress it. And that gives you more communication, efficient communication in the network. Um, and also when you have like, so like you're through with the whole proof, right? Then you would want to compress. So you would 
ultimately you want to compress to some, down to something if you want to use it, for instance, Ethereum, you would want to compress it down to something that you can put on the blockchain. Yeah, the compression is very tricky because you have to handle a two cycle of curves. So for example, for this step, we use a modified version of Spartan. And then for the next one, we use uh, Halo 2. And then we have to emulate the secondary field and the primary field. And then there's many more details. What you will see in the open source is this step completed. We will soon have the next step completed. And there's many details, right? But this diagram is just a simple version. OK, um, so we are also building um, a virtual machine and the idea is that we want to optimize it for uh, proof of performance um, and it looks a bit like this um, so it's a, it's not risk 5 but it's all like inspired by risk 5 um, so it's a 32-bit structure it has a program counter it has 32 bit uh, 32 registers um, and then input output behavior so you can give it input you can give it Auxiliary data, right? So a witness can be both something you want to keep secret to have privacy and zero knowledge. It can also just be for scalability, right? So something that's auxiliary data, just that the proof com the verification complexity of a proof should not depend on that input. Right. Um, so our CKVM supports any sort of like um, LLVM target specifically, um, or as well anything that compiles to Risk Five. What we do is something relatively simple. We translate from Risk Five to NVM, and the translation is simple because actually NVM was inspired by Risk Five. And so further improvements to the NVM are expected. But the two main benefits of the NVM is one, um, well, proof of performance. Uh, the NVM is way simpler, way smaller than Risk Five. And number two, um, security. Um, by just having a smaller, simpler to understand machine, it is easier to audit the circuits. And the circuits are actually totally public. You can go and check out the circuits for the MBM right now. Um, the circuits are fairly large in terms of number of constraints because we haven't taken any smart optimizations, but those are in the works. Um, in particular, um, the MBM is also designed for this idea of a pre-compiled system that is allowed by uh, the non-uniform IVC property uh, powered by Supernova, um, which allows you to have essentially like custom instructions in your instruction set architecture that are accelerated. So you can inject custom circuits as additional instructions in the CPU architecture and um, well, essentially build your own CKBM system without having to um, I don't know, depend on our choices. Uh, for example, this uh, instructions are like SHA-256, Kichak, ECDSA signatures. Um, and importantly, because um, right now, Nexus is based on Nova, which uh, supports server one CS. Uh, soon we'll move to Hypernova, which supports CCS. And so that means that uh, your custom instructions in the virtual machine can be written in, in CCS. Uh, okay, so for context, CCS is a constraint system that generalizes R1CS, Plonkish, and Air. And so, um, essentially, if you have um, your circuits for your custom instructions in any of these formats, you can just plug them into the CKBM and build your own CKBM. You have anything more to say about it? No? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, excellent. So, just in terms of user experience, we think this shouldn't be a big deal. It should be extremely simple, right? Um, should be as simple as creating a new Rust project and just doing Nexus proof, Nexus verify, and then you as a developer should not know anything about all of the cryptography that we are doing, um, and, and it should just run, right? And actually, this is the case. You can just try it out. It will run. Um, so I have to say the CKVM is still very slow for many, many reasons. When you will run it, you will see that it runs at about 100 cycles per second, depending on your machine, um, but at least it runs. So, <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, fully open source, usable today. Um, and uh, the Nexus One has many of these components already built in, right? The Nexus Virtual Machine, the Nexus Proof Compression System, an IVC and PCD system uh, that allows you to compute this in a distributed manner, uh, the memory checking me mechanism that uses Merkle trees, a compiler or transpiler from RISC V to NVM, a witness e extraction system, Oh, okay. And many expected upgrades. So we're running out of time. We had a demo here. And actually, let, let's finish it like this. If you go to prove.nexus.xyc on your device, uh, on your phone, um, 
you will see um, a little bit of how this looks like in, in real life. So prove.nexus.xyz. Yeah. Oh, I see many of you there. Yeah, so if you click connect, what you can see is you can see your peers, the speed at which they're producing proofs. So this is computing artworks, MSMs on your web browser. Um, and you can see the total throughput of the network and how the total throughput of the network at the top center is equal to the addition of all of these systems. And, um, well, I'll be honest, this system is not very efficiently distributing proof generation. It's just doing something very naive. But um, it is already, oh, too many people. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're very excited to launch this fairly soon. But what we just did is we united all of our devices to compute tiny portions of the proof together and then accumulate them all and build a single gigantic machine with, I don't know, like 50 people or something like that. So, um, yeah, you know, um, any device, almost any device can supply compute from your laptops, your, your tablets, your phones. Uh, the idea is that we'll have proof mining, right? You, you will earn some, um, I hope the SEC doesn't get at me, right? But some, <laughs> some Nexus tokens out of it, right? As, as you supply compute and as we all come together to computing and producing proofs for, uh, for Ethereum. And, well, we think this is, a, 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 um, like, there are some nice values for this, right? Human cooperation. Um, we can all come together to have a, a, f a future powered by truth, right? And so it's the coming of science together, the coming of engineering together, of open source uh, software, and of uh, human cooperation. And so, um, yeah, thank you very much. This is totally free, open source, Rust, MIT license. Please feel free to use it. <laughs>